Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's response to an infection causes damage to its own tissues and organs. Effective and timely management is essential to improve patient outcomes. This discussion will focus on the principles of sepsis management, including early intervention, supportive care, and targeted treatment strategies. Early Goal-Directed Therapy The foundation of sepsis management is early goal-directed therapy. This approach involves carefully adjusting cardiac preload, afterload, and contractility to balance oxygen delivery with oxygen demand. The primary goals are to initiate supportive care promptly to address physiological abnormalities, such as hypotension and hypoxemia. It is important to distinguish sepsis from systemic inflammatory response syndrome, SIRS, during the initial assessment. Initial assessment and workup. A standard evaluation for suspected sepsis includes several laboratory tests. Complete blood count, serum lactate, electrolytes, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, glucose, aspartate aminotransferase, alanine aminotransferase, prothrombin time, and partial thromboplastin time. If respiratory failure is suspected, arterial blood gas measurements should be taken. Identifying the source of infection quickly is essential. So tests such as chest x-rays, urinalysis, urine cultures, and blood cultures are typically performed. Additional tests may include sputum samples, cerebrospinal fluid analysis, and imaging studies like computed tomography scans. Stabilizing respiration. In cases of respiratory distress, oxygen supplementation is necessary. Continuous monitoring of pulse oximetry is required to assess oxygen saturation levels. If respiratory failure or decreased consciousness occurs, intubation and mechanical ventilation may be needed. Assessing perfusion. Perfusion assessment is a critical part of managing sepsis. A systolic blood pressure below 90 millimeters of mercury or a mean arterial pressure below 70 millimeters of mercury indicates hypotension and inadequate perfusion. Clinicians should also look for signs such as cool, vasoconstricted skin, tachycardia, altered mental status, or reduced urine output. An arterial catheter may be inserted for continuous monitoring if necessary. Elevated serum lactate levels above 2 millimole per liter suggest organ hypoperfusion, and levels at 4 millimoles per liter or higher are independent predictors of septic shock. Establishing central venous access. Patients diagnosed with septic shock typically require central venous access for the administration of vasopressors and hemodynamic monitoring. In contrast, patients with severe sepsis who respond well to fluids may not need a central catheter as they do not require vasopressor agents or invasive monitoring. Initial resuscitation. Aggressive fluid resuscitation is a fundamental part of treatment within the first six hours. The goals are to increase central venous pressure to between eight and 12 millimeters of mercury, central venous oxygen saturation to 70% or greater, mean arterial pressure to 65 millimeters of mercury or higher, and urine output to at least 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour. Current guidelines recommend administering intravenous fluids at 30 milliliters per kilogram for patients without contraindications. Use of vasopressors. If hypotension persists despite adequate fluid resuscitation, Defined as a central venous pressure between 8 and 12 millimeters of mercury with a mean arterial pressure below 65 millimeters of mercury, vasopressors such as norepinephrine, epinephrine, or vasopressin should be started. Monitoring central venous oxygen saturation. Once central venous pressure and mean arterial pressure targets are achieved, if central venous oxygen saturation remains below 70%, further interventions are necessary. This may involve increasing cardiac output through dobutamine administration or enhancing oxygen carrying capacity via red blood cell transfusion. If hemoglobin levels fall below 10 grams per deciliter, transfusion is indicated. Otherwise, dobutamine should be used to raise central venous oxygen saturation above 70%. 
Initiating Antibiotic Therapy Immediate initiation of intravenous antibiotic therapy is essential after obtaining appropriate cultures. When selecting antibiotics, consider the patient's medical history, gram stain results, and local resistance patterns. Empiric therapy should include broad-spectrum antibiotics targeting both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. A common regimen includes vancomycin combined with either ceftriaxone, piperacillin-tazobactam, or imipenem. If there is a risk of pseudomonas infection, consider using vancomycin in conjunction with ceftazidime and imipenem. Conclusion Effective management of sepsis depends on early recognition and intervention, which are vital for improving patient outcomes. The focus should be on aggressive resuscitation, maintaining adequate perfusion, and administering targeted antibiotic therapy promptly. Continuous monitoring of the patient's condition is necessary to make adjustments that improve the chances of survival for patients with sepsis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.